Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome everybody to the show. I am Donna Schwenk and today is Halloween. It's one of the biggest days for sugar of the year. So I think it's a fun time to dress up for Halloween and go trick-or-treating and I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade. But sometimes, guys, we take our bodies for granted. All the wonderful tasks they perform for us each and every day. And I love understanding how the body works. And when you do understand it, it really helps you. And it helps you to work with your body in a wonderful way. And sometimes when we load them with sugar, um, when we eat a lot of sugar, especially like if we do it on a consistent basis, it can cause a lot of problems Um, And we have such little understanding of what's really going on inside of us. And if we can give our bodies a little bit of help with a boost with a few foods, it can make such a difference in our life. And if we understand what's happening, um, we'll have less and less problems wanting these types of foods. And I'm excited to share with you what I've learned today because it's made such a huge difference in my life. And it's something that I use a lot for me um, and my family And it really makes all the difference. And you can eat, you know, you can have some sugar once in a while, but there's some things that you can do with it. And there are certain types of sugar that are better from you than others. But all in all, we should try to limit it as much as possible because things go on inside of us that we're not aware of. And so you really need to stay tuned for this whole podcast because when you understand this, it's going to have an impact on you like nothing else. Because when I learned it, it, uh, it cleared up a lot of the cobwebs I had in my mind about why things were happening when they did and what was going on when I um, would get sick and things. And I didn't understand how it worked. Once I got that information, it, uh, it really changed everything for me and my family. And sugar is a, is a pretty big buzzword in the world of health and wellness. And our consumptions for sugary drinks and treats has skyrocketed. And with that skyrocketing um, desire for these tr- treats and for soda pops, our health has plummeted and we're going to understand something really key that happens that maybe you don't know about. I surely didn't know about this and I think it will really help you. Okay. So there's a couple of things I want to tell you and we're going to talk off them, talk off about them right off the bat. The first thing I want to tell you is having sugar can lower your immune system by 75%. And not only that, but bad bacteria feeds on sugar while good bacteria likes other foods. And we're going to talk about that. That's kind of exciting to me because I really enjoy this part. Okay, so you're a hundred trillion bacteria, right? And 99% of your bacteria is harmless or good bacteria. But what you feed your bacteria is going to determine how healthy you feel. So let's take a look at this. You've got gazillions of little healthy minions inside of you. More than the stars in the Milky Way galaxy, you have a hundred trillion bacteria. It's who you are. More than cells in your body by 10 times. You are a sack of bacteria walking around. That's who you are. That's what you are. And you're just going to have to deal with it because it's a big deal and it's important. And we've been ignoring this thing for years, but you are bacteria and something made you this way. And bacteria is the most dominant organism on the planet. You are more bacteria than anything else. And I think it's time we all start paying attention to it. So if you're 100 trillion bacteria, do you know what they love to eat? And what keeps them healthy? And in turn, what keeps you healthy? Bacteria loves fiber. There are two kinds of fiber. Insoluble fiber, which does not dissolve in water and is not fermented by the gut's bacteria. Um, and then there's soluble fiber, which does dissolve in water and is broken down and fermented by bacteria in the colon. While both are good, the soluble fiber feeds the good bacteria and does many jobs that promote um, health, such as attaching to cholesterol, cholesterol product particles. Goodness, let me say that again. Cholesterol particles and taking them out of the body helping them to keep your blood sugar stable and many other jobs. That's what bacteria can do. Just a few of the many things they do. 
insoluble fiber has benefits such as staying intact and providing bulk, which keeps you feeling full longer and providing bulk for your stools. And if you eat a lot of fiber, your body will grow and multiply the, those microbes. They will duplicate themselves over and over again, and they will keep you healthy, happy, and strong. These microbes love fruits and vegetables. They love legumes, and they even like potatoes, which is a special kind of fiber called resistant starch. And they go crazy for resistant starch. And resistant starch means it resists digestion. It, it has resistance to it, um, and they love it. And it does special things inside your body um, that the other, back, uh, the other types of fibers do not do. Um, and it's a really good one. And it's in quite a few foods. And you'll be surprised. Um, we're going to have to do a show on it because I love it. And it, it does so many things that we're just so unaware of. Your back, microbes also love oats and seeds and nuts and grains. And all of these types of foods are the fiber they love. And it keeps them healthy. They love the fiber. You don't really get much from some of the fiber that we eat because your body can't really do anything with it because it can't adjust it, but your bacteria can. And so when it does that, it, um, it makes them grow and multiply, which keeps you really, really healthy. Now, if you don't kill these microbes with antibiotics, you're going to have many species. And the more the better. If, but if you've taken a lot of antibiotics or you have a diet with lots of sugar and processed foods, then you're going to need some help to replenish these strains that are in your body. Okay, so here's what happens when you have a lot of sugar. Your bacteria shifts dramatically, but so does your immune system. Pathogens and harmful bacteria feed on sugar, while healthy bacteria feed on fiber. Sugars and processed foods, um, these foods you served as like a fertilizer for pathogenic microorganisms. And they also feed yeast, causing them to rapidly multiply. And the best way to support your microbe diversity is to eat a diet, including lots of foods that have prebiotics, that are fiber-rich vegetables, fruits, seeds, nuts, and lots of probiotic foods, cultured foods, and avoiding antibiotics. Okay, so let's recap. Good bacteria loves fiber-rich foods. Harmful microbes like sugar and processed foods. But that's not all. Your immune system will go haywire when you have sugar because it confuses it. And here's why. Okay, listen to this part if you don't listen to any other part of my broadcast because this might possibly change the way you look at sugar forever. Your immune system is your body's defense against infection and illness. It recognizes the cells that make up your body and will try to get rid of anything that's unfamiliar to it. It destroys germs, bacteria that are harmful, and viruses and parasites. But this defense system can also cause problems. Okay, so how does our body defend us from a virus? So a virus is an infectious microorganism that requires a living host to survive and multiply. And when one enters your body, it invades it and takes over your cells, redirecting them to produce more of this virus. So white blood cells destroy germs as soon as they detect them. As soon as they see them in the body, they want to get rid of them. However, if a viral infection begins to take hold, your body has to fight back using a more powerful defense of cells called T and B cells. Antibodies are special proteins that are made up by B cells and they bind to a virus to stop it from replicating. And then they tag that virus so that the other blood cells know to destroy them. And all of this is going on inside and you don't have any idea what's happening, but this is, they're very busy. There's a whole world inside of you. It's very, very cool when you think about it because there's this whole community of um, all kinds of different kinds of bacteria, And if you've got a virus, there's in there and there's this world going on inside of you and they're all busy working trying to keep you healthy. And they work really hard for you. And you don't even know it. So when you understand it, it really can make a difference for you. For instance, the T cells, they have um, a different role to play. Some of them act like guard dogs. that, And they, what they do is they raise the alarm when they detect an invading virus. They, they sound out an alarm. And here's the really important part. Here's where bacteria comes in. Certain bacteria in the gut influence the development of your immune system. And um, they do things like correcting deficiencies 
and um, they increase the number of T cells. But there are two kinds of T cells, um, killer cells and helper cells. And the killer T cells, well, they'll go out and they'll find and destroy an infected cell that's been turned into, you know, a virus making factory. Um, but helper cells don't fight um, invaders themselves. Instead, they kind of, they're like a little team coordinator. And when a helper T cell sends out a chemical message, it's matched by the killer T cell. It gets alerted and then that there's a virus present. And so it goes, it has to go after it and destroy it. So having a lot of good bacteria in the gut will dramatically increase your T cell production and keep communication among like all of your cells functioning at a really well high level. Um, and you know, the signals that are derived from these little uh, beneficial microbes um, they're, they're really essential. They're essential for um, your immune system to work optimally um, because it helps them to respond to viral infections. And if you don't have a lot of good bacteria, then it can't work because you won't have enough helper cells and you won't have enough killer T cells. And then the virus will get a foothold and it's going to take you longer to get rid of it. And you may suffer for a while. And so that's why it's so important to have a lot of good bacteria. Okay, so T cells. You want lots of them, right? And you want T cells that kill viruses and you want T cells that alert those who will destroy the virus. And how do you get more T cells? Lots and lots of good bacteria. And how do you get that? You eat lots of cultured foods that have the strains in them and then you eat lots of prebiotics. This is why cultured foods work so effectively. If you eat them with prebiotic foods, like I talked about earlier, they're gonna grow and multiply and you're gonna have lots of T cells that are gonna help you and keep you healthy, keep your immune system strong. So one of the things that can affect your immune system is eating sugar. Um, this was the reason that my family always got sick at the at, uh, Christmas. Oh gosh, every year we would go to my mom's. We lived in Kansas City, and this is way before I knew about cultured foods. And we would drive 20 hours, 19 or 20 hours, I can't remember how it was, to Virginia. And then the whole time, we, we had such fun. My sisters were all there with their kids, and it was a lot of fun. And we were all together, and we would eat oh, so much sugar. It was ridiculous. Somebody uh, would make gallons of cookies, and we would, have, um, we would have, we'd have a lot of fun. But we had so many desserts and sweets, and it was just this really big, fun time. And we would do it every year. But every year, we, everybody got sick, not just my family, but everybody. And we would talk about it. We would say, everybody gets sick at Christmas. Why do we all get sick? Is it because we're all together and because we're sharing germs or we didn't know what it was. But um, what I learned was, it's, this is pretty profound. So let's talk about this. Um, vitamin C is really important for your immune system. And in the 1970s, um, Dr. Linus Pauling, he's one of the greatest researchers in the field of microbiology, he discovered that vitamin C helps the body combat the common cold. And he also found that sugar can do the opposite. And, you know, I actually have a memory of this. And I think I was like in high school. And I remember my dad telling me about this researcher about vitamin C. I remember him telling me that. And um, so let's, let's say you have a sugary treat. Maybe you decide to have something like a piece of cake or some cookies or a large glass of soda that's got sugar in it. Um, any of any of these foods would be enough to get your blood sugar to start rising. And as your blood sugar starts to rise from the sugar and gets to about 120 units or above, the white blood cells start to lose their ability to absorb and fight infections. And the reason that they lose their ability to do that is because your cells think that sugar is vitamin C. And let me explain this. Vitamin C is really important for your immune system, and, it, and it's used by your white blood cells to engulf and absorb viruses and harmful bacteria. And all of your white blood cells need to contain 50 times the concentration of vitamin C as would normally be found in the blood around it. Now, sugar or glucose has a very similar chemical structure to vitamin C. It looks like vitamin C. So when you eat sugar, your cells hungrily take in the sugar thinking that it's vitamin C. And so the 50% concentration of vitamin C in your cells starts to drop and your immune system's ability to fight a virus is reduced by 75%. And 
and it can take four to six hours for the vitamin C concentration in the white blood cells to go back to the normal level again. So it's not a great idea, and especially, especially if you're sick, to eat any kind of sugar because the white blood cells can't get past the sugar to do their job because they think the sugar's in the cells instead of the vitamin C. So the immune system is struggling and is hampered in a, in a large way. So having a lot of vitamin C in your diet is a great way to keep your immune system healthy. It's great for allergies. It's great for seasonal allergies. It's great for so many things. Vitamin C, and it's in a natural form, and we need to have it uh, regularly because our body doesn't make it. And it's water-soluble, so it doesn't stay in the body longs. But we need lots of vitamin C, and you can get that. Almost all the cultured foods have vitamin C in them. And uh, that's a thrilling thing to me. But so do things like oranges and strawberries and grapefruits and so many foods, um, especially in their whole natural state, are loaded with vitamin C, and they're a great help to us, lemons, oranges. And so one of the things that you may not know is that one cup or the juice of a cultured cabbage, a fermented cabbage, which teach people how to make cultured vegetables, can have as much as 700 milligrams of vitamin C. And unfermented cabbage, just regular cabbage, only has 70 milligrams of vitamin C in raw cabbage. And that's pretty impressive. Um, and that's why I always found help from cultured vegetables when I was sick, or even when I wasn't sick, when I had seasonal allergies or anything like that. I would take some juice or some cultured vegetables and I wouldn't even take a cup. I would take a few spoonfuls and it would make a difference for me. Um, Almost within minutes, I could tell the difference, but it was because they were loaded with vitamin C. Um, And there are many reasons that, you know, your body needs cultured foods besides the fact that you have, you know, a hundred trillion bacteria. Um, they They need the cultured foods because you need the species inside of you that will help you to keep your immune system running strong and make lots of T cells that will help your immune system to handle the stresses and the sicknesses in your life. And when you learn that and when you understand it, you'll start paying attention to it. You'll start noticing it. And so when you have sugar, and I mean, everybody's going to have it. And I'm, I'm not a killjoy where I doesn't think you should ever have it. I mean, there's, there's other forms of um, sugar that... Coconut sugar is better. It doesn't seem to spike my sugar, my blood sugar as strong as some other things. But I always have a cultured food. Um, if I'm going to have some kind of a, tr- a dessert or treat, I have either kombucha or a spoonful of vegetables or somewhere in my meal. And that's going to make a difference because it's going to allow you to have more microbes that are going to eat the eat eat the sugar and eat some of the other foods that is going to help your immune system to stay boosted and to stay strong. And um, that doesn't give you a license to eat it, or especially me. I've learned that. I've learned that the hard way. But it has made a huge difference in all of my family staying healthy, even through cold and flu season. We just don't get it. We don't get those kinds of um, problems anymore. We do occasionally, but it's always because we've either been over tight. And I mean, I bet 99% of the time it's because we've had sugar. Somebody's gotten a cold every time. And I can point right back to it. It's a, it's, it's unbelievable to me. Some way the immune system or the body got um, stressed and it didn't have what it needed. And so we've learned that, you know, having these powerful cultured foods is a no brainer. There are some of the most powerful reasons you need to eat cultured foods is to boost your immune system, especially now as we're going into cold and flu season. And I'm not just giving you figures and facts. I've actually lived these results, and I've seen so many other people do it. They work. They do the job. You get the benefits, and it will make you a believer. And you won't need somebody else to convince you because you'll have witnessed it in your own body. So on this Halloween have fun, go out and have a good time. Just don't kill yourself with sugar. And if you do try to have a cultured food with it or some kombucha or just something to combat a little bit and uh, keep it on the down low if you can. And I'm getting ready to do some uh, free eBooks on my membership site, my Biotic Pro membership site. We have a Halloween eBook and this will be the last day we're giving it to members. 
So if you're a Biotic Pro member, um, and you can do that at my site at culturedfoodlife.com, we give away eBooks almost every month to our members and they have like 30, anywhere from 15 to uh, 30 recipes um, kind of for that month. And this month was a Halloween book that we made a bunch of, oh goodness, we have a whole bunch of uh, different treats that are kind of Halloween based and they're healthy for you. They're good for you. They're loaded with probiotics. Some of them will have used a little bit of sugar, but we don't use very much. And it's either stevia or honey or maple syrup and those have minerals in them so if you're going to have sugar you need to have ones with minerals and the minerals will make a difference and things like maple syrup um, sucanat uh, those healthier types of mineral base that are less refined um, are better for you and you still have to live and have a have a good time but we've got lots of alternatives for you and lots of fun things so you don't feel deprived so if you'd like that free ebook, that's today's the last day to get it for Biotic Pro members. Um, and you can sign up for just one month or you can sign up for a year. You get a discount. We have like 50 plus videos. We have a live chat. We have forums. We have special recipes. We have uh, meal planners. We have all kinds of things on our membership site. But I have a lot on my regular site too. So I have everything you need to get started on my regular site and that's all free. But all the extra fun stuff that we do, and we're going to be adding a, a Thankful for Microbes book next month. Um, it's going to have all kinds of foods for Thanksgiving and through the holidays, and it's going to be fun. And these are foods that keep you healthy, and they're going to, and we're going to do one for Christmas too. So hang on, we got, we got things coming out your way that can help you, um, you know, readjust your microbiome, giving your, uh, your microbes lots of fiber in these delicious foods that are that are also treats too we've got a lot of treats we've got pumpkin ice cream in this one and we've got green goblin no i think it's ogre ice cream which is probably one of my favorites it's made with kefir cheese it's really good it's one of my favorite and i have it all the time i even have it for lunch and it's got um it's got great things in it for you that's gonna not only help feed your micros but also uh, boost your immune system because it's got a lot of healthy foods in it so thanks for listening. Have a wonderful Halloween and try not to eat too much sugar. Give your kids sugar. And if you do, just do it for one day and uh, try to limit it the next. But have a wonderful time. Thanks for listening. And remember, sugar can drop your immune system by 75% if you have too much of it. So remember, eat your cultured foods and get lots of things with minerals and healthy whole foods. And your body was designed to heal you and keep you healthy. And it's a pretty cool way to live your life. Have a wonderful week and have a wonderful night. Thanks for listening.